singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. What is going on, y'all? Welcome into the Justin Moore Podcast. Season 3, episode 11, you've got the ever-tardy JM and the always punctual JR, uh, who wants to kill me today because I'm about an hour and a half <laughs> behind uh, when we were supposed to start recording this podcast. But here we are. Uh, what in the world are we going to do today and talk about today, man? What's happening, JR? Hey, buddy. No, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say the always punctual JR. That's for dang sure. Anybody knows me <laughs> just la is rolling in their office chair right now thinking, yeah, right. Uh, but anyway, yeah, hey, buddy, good to see you. Uh, man, you know, we dropped off last week on some Q&A, and by the end of that, we, I still had like three pages left, and then I ended up getting another handful or two um, after that. So I thought we just, since we've got a huge guest, we, we kind of mentioned last week that we've got a huge guest coming on next week's cast. Mm -hmm. I thought we'd go ahead and knock out some more of this Q and a, cause I know next week we're, um, we're probably not going to get to any, we're going to have a good long convo. Um, and we, and we've, and you know, we got to do a little shedding too, to get, get hearsed up for, uh, for that. Cause it's uh, a get the, the guest is not necessarily someone we already know. So I thought if you're cool with it, we jump back on this as they say, and, um, they, was it pardon the interruption? PTI mailbag. We'll jump on. <laughs> yeah, uh, PTI, we'll, we'll, yeah. We'll jump on a little more uh, Q and A today because man, there was a bunch of good ones, and I want to get to all these people, and we've got some shout outs, and we've got stuff to talk about. Um, so I thought we'd just do that if that's cool with you. And then I actually um, I was going to talk to you off air before we jumped on, but we're running a little behind today. But I've got a plan for not next week, but the next week's guest, who is a newer artist who just had some music come out that I've already talked about being on the cast. But uh, So I think I've got something really cool lined up for week after ne next week, movie star, week after that, uh, rising country star. So that's awesome. the plan. And uh, until then, uh, I say we just do this Q&A. And, I don't, and b before we jump on that, though, I, 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 talked, I text with your wife, Kate, earlier, um, and she said, y'all had beautiful weather today. I'm in the opposite. It's rained no, every don't. day. Is She's what, lying to you. She must have just I, I, woke up when she texted me that because I said, "Is your internet not working, or is Justin's phone dead?" No, I, well, she said, both. "Weather's great here." Both. <laughs> oh, uh, we have terrible weather. I don't know why she said it was good. She must have just woke up, and my phone was dead. So, <laughs> yeah, she literally said, "No weather's." Because I said, "We got y'all must have bad weather up there like we do here." She said, "No weather's great here." <laughs> no, it's no. It's, I just it's, caught her off guard. Black as night outside. <laughs> I was gonna say it's. It looks like it. Yeah, it's going. The sun's going down at my house. Uh, yeah. yeah, we've had rain every day since I've been home. Luckily, after we jumped off last week, uh, I did get my yard cleaned up. Uh, before all the rain comes, so I was in a better spot than I was to start with. So that was good. Hey, and but while I'm talking about rain and the rain, um, a friend of ours who we've listened to their music a ton, he's a dear friend of mine, a brother of mine I've known forever, has also got a new album out. It's happily titled The Rain from our brother, the old wampus cat himself, Mr. Dallas Moore. Uh, has a new album can't come, that just came out. It's called The Rain. It's making a lot of the charts, Texas charts, all that fun stuff. Uh, but you can go to dallasmore.com and check out all Dallas's stuff. His last couple, I told him his records just keep, I've known a guy 20 years, his records just keep getting better and better. And, you know, Roger and I talk about it because Roger went and saw him open for Leonard Skinner in Louisville back in the 90s and been a fan ever since. And I became friends with him through Wayne. But uh, I want y'all to go check out my brother Dallas Moore and his new album, The Rain. Um, it's available everywhere now. It's it's killer. And then go back and get his last few records too. So I want to drop that in. It made me think about that while we're talking yeah, Rod about The Rain. Rog actually introduced me to uh, his music, and you keep saying your brother. He's my brother. He's a Moore. That's right. That's right. I, I don't know. I That's don't know. Cousin. Him. Yeah, I don't That's know him. But uh, this is the king of bullshit mountain right there. That's that was it. the first <laughs> record or, or song that I was introduced to. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, his band anyway, was called yeah. Dallas Moore and the Snatch Wranglers when I first <laughs> met him, and, their, and their, their album, their CD was in front of a strip club in Kentucky somewhere. Oh yeah, he's from goodness. like he's from like Cincinnati area, man. Just a, an old wampus cat for sure, old pole cat. But uh, yeah, y'all check that out. Um, just want to drop that on there before we get started on this Q and A. You said y'all got good weather. I know the last we talked last week, you were going. To no, some Kate header. said we got no. good weather. We Sorry. don't have good weather. You said you got <laughs> bad weather. Sorry, I'm, now I'm confused. I'm hoping for good weather. I want good weather so bad that 
I'm just, I'm just thinking everybody else's weather's good. But uh, I, did you get to? Did y'all have decent enough weather this past week to get your games in last week after we got off with the girls the, and everything? We did. Yeah, we did. We got. We went. Um, so we we do double headers each week um, with uh, certain teams, and uh, we we had eight U and ten U both double headers. And we went four and zero. Oh, so, nice! And yeah. with the ten with the ten U team, I will say this: um, we we played against a girl who was th- so ten U, uh, which one of my daughters plays on, or actually both do. But um, uh, Ella plays both ten U and twelve U. Our oldest daughter. Um, this girl was throwing almost fifty from thirty five foot. 50 Goodness. from 35 foot just just yeah let that let that marinate there's um, no time it's crazy. to think you don't have time to think no what, and how, so we we had one kid who put, put the ball in play uh and it was ella so i was proud of her um nice. and how'd, so, Ken, how'd but, kendy barrett do she caved both times but she reached because on a drop third strike you can you can right. run to first and so fortunately for us, our team, yeah. um, she reached both times and scored both times. And um, but yeah, um, Ella was wow. the only one to put it in play. Uh, and, and, and my Kennedy um, actually, who she's younger, she's nine. Uh, for those out there listening, she actually uh, drilled one down the right field line, um, but it was foul. But, oh, but I mean, for her to do that against yeah. that type of pitcher was awesome. So, in, yeah. in, in comparison, uh, in 12 view for like Ella, for instance, they're pitching from 40 feet. So, it's a whole yeah. different ball, and it's a bigger ball. And it, anyway, that so 50, 50 mile an hour from 35 feet is humming, buddy. Oh, yeah, no it doubt. It is flat out. Th- that girl was flat out sending it. Wow. Yeah. Hey, and talking, I want to give a shout out to said uh, Kennedy Faye Moore. Um, I got to watch her games last week. And I tell you, buddy, for watching her f- four years ago when she first started trying to play, watching Ellen and her friends, to that little girl I saw in left field or right field last week, uh, ready, ready position before every play, not picking flowers, not kicking dirt. Yep. I mean, she is she has come a long way. She, I think yeah. she's going to be a little stud, too, because – progression i'm just watched her come along and you could tell she was in the game she was focused so i'm proud i tell you what her her approach at the plate she's gonna be the one who can flat out rake for for baseball and softball fans out there you'll know what i'm talking about she can flat rake man she can she can hit the ball so uh but yeah we got them in we went four and oh we we we, (laughs) this this poor girl who i'm talking about pitching against us threw a no hitter um and lost five to one because <laughs> wow. we we run the bases buddy we run yeah. them now I, yeah so. i know y'all do so yeah well cool deal man well yeah we'll um we'll we'll get on some more sports uh next week probably pre-show and i know we just uh we did the uh, had the live stream this past week which was great and uh we actually got to go to nashville and uh you got to play a little golf i got to see some of our uh, talk some management stuff and see some buddies so we'll save that for next week as well because that's a that's some good stories from that but we want to get on those next week so want to uh let's go ahead and just dive right into this we'll do a few and then we'll take a break at some point uh just cut me off if you need to um, I got one right here. It's basically just a shout out. It was a very cool video uh, this guy sent me. Uh, his name's Dustin at Dustin underscore Credible. Dustin Credible, pretty cool. Uh, it was a wrestler, just incredible back in the day in uh, ECW. But uh, he said, so my grandpa was in the hospital the other day, and one of his buddies found out, and this happened. Made my grandpa's day. Hashtag Small Town USA. Hashtag Find Out Who Your Friends Are. Hashtag House Concert. I'd love for you guys to give him a shout out. He'd love it. Cheers, boys. Well, it was a video of his granddad must have been in the hospital, and a friend of his brought, uh, I think it was, I know an acoustic guitar, maybe a banjo or a fiddle, and they got up and just jammed in the hospital uh, room where his granddad That's was. Awesome. So yeah, it was pretty cool. They were smiling. They were singing some good. I don't remember the song. I'm sure Roger and Joe from Tracy's band would know it because it's some old bluegrass song that you know that only bluegrassers know the you know the titles to 67 different you know coal mine songs. But it was uh it was super cool nonetheless. So Dustin Incredibles grandpa, shout out to you, buddy. You keep <sighs> rocking, get well soon, and uh, we hope to see you at a show sometime. Um, want to give that shout out. 
Let's see. Let's do this one. Uh, here's another shout out to our old NASCAR buddy, Kyle Lawler. Uh, not sure when y'all are recording, but how about number one country song for my birthday, March 24th, 1990, Hard Rock Bottom of Your Heart by Mr. Randy Travis. That's a good one. To the hard rock bottom of your heart. 1990. Don't you know Randy was rocking Man, the 90 song? Rocking. Those, vi- those videos, the George. I'll tell you it something. It was probably to watch. about the time that uh, we saw him on that, uh, that, that George Jones show. Yeah, anybody out there wants to see some classic country interactions and, and picking and grinning and talks, go watch YouTube the the George Jones show. It's all you got to do, and uh, you're you you're welcome. Yeah, uh, that's what I was so, gonna say. You're welcome. Yeah, that's yeah, uh, that's it's, awesome. It's so good, right? Just just so classic. Him in the chair, just no script. It, it, it's, it's basically a podcast before podcast. Yeah, it is, and and I mean this almost in an. No, I mean it not almost in an endearing way that uh, it's so unprofessional. Like it, it, there's nothing pro about it, but it's all George. He's yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> welcome, to, start- welcome to my show. It's <laughs> yeah. the George Jones show. <laughs> <laughs> and then his, you know, his britches are, he's sitting in a, like a lazy boy. Huge um, lazy boy. Leather, huge leather lazy boy. Pleather. Pleather, yeah. <laughs> Tan. Tan. And, you know. <laughs> and like his balls and everything just hanging out. I mean, it's just it's just it's so ridiculous that it's yeah, awesome. he's got his he's got his britches way up on his lunchbox like all our granddads and uncles do oh, when they're yeah. sitting somewhere, like Charlie it's just used crazy. to wear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the guest he would have a he would have a legend and then a current star and an up and coming star so it was just it's really cool so y'all check that out the George Jones so we can go we can talk about that all day we watched a few episodes last week or 2 weeks ago on the bus uh next one i got here is from brother mike luke mike luke 9742715 on twitter says hashtag justin more podcast so justin i'm about to get my first truck any recommendations and justin what was your first truck well, I mean, as far as recommendations, it depends on what you're you're uh, trying to do with it. Obviously, are you trying to pull a boat or a trailer or a tractor or the you know? Uh, if it's just a truck that you're just gonna uh, go and and do Back minimal and forth to town. Yeah, minimal like pulling and stuff. I would I would do a half ton if it if you're gonna be pulling a a trailer with real heavy equipment like a tractor then you need it you know a three-quarter ton which is what i I drive i drive a f-250 ford yep um but my first truck was a f-150 which is the half ton uh that's what i'm driving now ford pickup that's what jr drives um and you know, I mean, we can have the debate, and maybe we should do that one day on here about Chevys, Fords, uh, Dodges. I like a Chevy. I like a Ford. Hey. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've just always been a Ford guy personally, and I've had Chevys, and I've had GMCs, and I've had uh, – I haven't ever had a Dodge, but I've had uh, Chevys, Fords, and, and GMCs. I just prefer Fords personally. Um, but if you're going to be doing minimal, I guess, hauling, pulling, whatever, I'd go with F-150. If you're going to be doing more heavy, uh, hauling and all that, uh, F-250 would be what I would choose. Uh, also it depends on what your, uh, your budget is, (laughs) you know, obviously if you, if you, if you have to go with a, um, if you have to go with a uh, a smaller truck, you, it's hard to beat a Toyota Tacoma. Uh, that's what I was about to say. You know, so yeah, you ain't, uh, that would be Toyota's. my my suggestions. But yeah, I I agree, and I would say this. You know, uh, I'm like you. I drive a Ford F one fifty now. Hell, I bought a used one. They're not cheap used. I mean, I ain't nothing cheap these days. You can't get a five dollar lunch anymore. That's gonna cost you twelve fifty. Uh, plus another two dollars for the tea, but anyway, yeah. So um, I lo- I love my F one fifty. I tell you something, I did have a Dodge. Uh, I, I had a ninety nine Dodge back when I was in college. I love that Dodge, um, but it was not four wheel drive, 
And I will say this, I will never own another vehicle or another truck that's not four-wheel drive, whether it be a half ton, a three-quarter ton, whatever. I am not going to own another truck four-wheel drive. I can remember getting stuck in wet pine straw on a little bit of incline trying to get between some pine trees one time and had to get buddies to help jump on the back of the truck. And I said, never again. I'm getting a four-wheel drive. And I haven't had to use it a whole mm-hmm. lot, but uh, it's if you live – that's another thing, too. If you live in rural America like we do, you definitely want the four-wheel drive. If you live in a mm-hmm. city and you're just running errands and, and doing stuff for it a don't town, matter. It, yeah, yeah I, w- I would go with some, one of those that gets the best gas mileage, to be honest with you. And uh, I – this truck I'm on now is a gas guzzler, but the next one will be a diesel. If not, uh, and don't nobody persecute me out there, I'm, I, I may get a cyber truck if I can afford it when they come out because uh, that autonomous driving thing is very enticing to me for driving long distance But uh, and the gas mileage. And, and we can get into this, too, at some point uh, down the road, but JR and I are on opposing sides on this. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not I, – I don't want that crap to – I know it's coming whether I want it or I don't. But I hate it, and he he kind of he kind of digs it. So we can get on that at some point. But to your point about um, the other, um, as far as always having a four wheel drive, my wife drives a SUV. Whether it be uh, I mean, right now she has a, a Yukon, um, but she's had Tahoes, Yukons, Expeditions, all of the above, and. We always get a four wheel drive in her vehicle too, uh, just so yeah. that we know that if it snows or ices or whatever, we can get wherever, do whatever. And if we need to pull one of our boats with her vehicle, yeah. um, not that you, you have, have to option. have, a, you don't have to have a four wheel drive for that, but um, it, we always get the bigger package, heavier, dutier package to to be able to to use hers in that regard as well so yeah that was like uh, i could have bought a newer truck with with without the bigger suspension and that stuff and the four-wheel drive but that was just i was set on that's what i had to have so that'd be that'd be our suggestions mike um uh like i said i, I a lot of good trucks out there and nowadays like my granddad i remember him telling me one time he says used to a truck drove like a truck but now trucks drive like cars you know so um i, um, I, I don't think I don't think I'll ever drive anything outside of a truck. My, my last car was that diesel Mercedes that got 40-something miles to the gallons, an older model diesel Mercedes. And I love that car, but it sits so low to the ground. I just like sitting up now. When it's bad weather, I can see better. Uh, well, I'll, I'll give you an example. My, my wife, um, if I'm not home, she never drives her car. She always drives my truck. She yep. loves driving my truck. Mm-hmm. And so – and she's – five five petite 115 yeah. pounds or what i mean but she loves my truck because right to your grandpa's point um i mean they're just they drive so great they're super com- i mean hell my my truck has massagers in the seat yeah I mean, like, it, it's And ridiculous. my favorite thing is that, that when it blows, I, the heated seats are fine. I'm sure you like the heated seats, but I like that, like, Sharice's car's got it, too, the cooling seats where it blows the fan and cools oh, your yeah. back and your butt when you're driving. My next one will have that, Thunderhead. So, anyway, there's Trucks by JR and JM. <sighs> uh, here's another one from my old buddy Kyle. He got two in a row on here. Look at you, Kyle. Uh this was actually a question for Roger and Josh when we were going to have the band guys on. We were doing an acoustic run, but we'd end up not because of uh, issues there, as usual. So, But it also says Justin and JR can chime in. And we'll ask Roger and Josh next time. We are going to do a band cast at some point this year, probably from the road once we're back rocking again. Um, but this is, uh, what song features your favorite guitar solo? And I'm assuming he means your songs, uh, of your songs in the live set. Hmm. I know, I know one of mine for sure. I mean, obviously, Beta Hook, that first signature lick on Beta Hook is pretty cool. But the intro <laughs> to uh, it's just—it's almost like a vintage Hank Jr. sing along. But I, I, I like Backwoods. Those licks in Backwoods are just so nasty. I, I like all, I like the solos in. Backwoods. Yeah, that's a good one. Um. I don't know. I mean, that really would be um, not to dodge the question. That really would be a question for 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 them. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure they've got a good. They've you got know, some good ones. One of the ones that I I personally love um, is um, flying down a back road. 
the slide in it. Yeah. I just love slide guitar. So, I mean, that would be one of mine. And that's not necessarily the solo, but um, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I like the guitar parts on that, that particular song. All right, I'm going to save that one, Kyle. We'll circle back to that in a couple of months whenever we get the boys on. I got another one here that kind of goes along with that. And uh, this is from, uh, I believe this is from Instagram, from uh, Joshua Curtis 13 Hey, JR and JM, keep up the great work with the podcast. I can't get enough of it. With, with that great suggestion of this week, Mount Rushmore, of albums, I thought I would like to ask Justin which of his albums was his favorite to record and which is his favorite to perform. I have always liked Justin's music, but Outlaws Like Me set the hook. That's my favorite album, edging out my second favorite, Late Nights and Long Necks. And JR, what is your favorite Justin album? Hope to see you guys again soon at Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom up here in New Hampshire. Keep up the great work. Can't wait for the music. And we actually are coming back to Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom. That's one of the ones we talked about last week when we were talking about venues. That's the cool one on the boardwalk there where we got the lobster. The lobster, that, yeah. That Nat King Cole and Elvis and Frank Sinatra and everybody's played. So, uh, so yeah, which is your favorite to record? And what's your favorite album? I guess songs Man, off the album. Favorite that you play to live? record? I don't know. I, I would say I, I'll go this direction. My favorite to record was my first one because I was That's so so excited to have the opportunity to actually go and record a whole album. Because uh, even when you sign a record deal, you don't realize, or I shouldn't say you don't realize, there's no guarantee that you get to record a full album. But when we had our first big hit record with Small Town USA, that allowed us the opportunity to go record a full album. Um, and you're just so excited. I mean, you, you've, you've written for so many years, and, um, you know, to have a chance to go record those songs and know that you're going to put them on a project that's going to go out and be distributed and all that. That was, in that was my cool favorite. studio with all the pro, pro players. You just... Just and we level. recorded probably half or more of those vocals down in just some hole in the wall in Destin, Florida, which oh that's right, you know was just so cool and um, so that was probably my my favorite to record and I would agree with him my favorite album I've ever recorded would be Outlaws Like Me. I think it's the best album I've ever done and I've tried to beat it every single time I've recorded an album. But that was my favorite. I thought it was the best one we've ever done. And uh, my producer thought Off the Beaten Path, that was his favorite. When we talked to Jeremy Stover, my producer, uh, you know, a, a month or two ago, if you guys remember that episode. If not, go back and listen to it. Um, but I don't know. Outlaws Like Me holds a really special place in my heart. But Late Nights and Long Necks, I think, is a really, really good album as well. Yeah. What about, uh, I would have to say, and I'll get back to uh, playing live, but I would have to say, and this is funny because Sharice was out listening to some of your music on the porch last night, um, putting adding some stuff to her playlist for her salon when she has people over and working on their hairdos and stuff. And um, she she's eat up with um, the new stuff, and, and obviously you're old. She was listening to Backwoods when I walked out, and I was like, I hear you, listen to a little JM. Um which that I love that I love all your records. Obviously, I didn't know you when you had those first couple of records. And to me, personally, I like your newer records. Not that I don't like the songs on your old records, but I've I heard you do most of your older record outside of probably Beta Hook and a few of those that I'd heard on the radio before we met and on music videos. Um, but like I said, I was already on the road, so it wasn't like I was really consuming the radio or watching. You know what I could pick up here and there, but. I just know you from playing those songs live after you'd recorded them, but you were older then, and I think your voice has changed to me for the better. I like your voice now, and when I hear the older records of you doing the songs I heard you first doing live, it sounds different to me, and I just like the way your voice sounds now on the on the new stuff because that's kind of what I got used to. I heard you do them live right. before I listened to the records 200 times like since and I, I'm just more of a fan of the the, the newer sound of of your voice just because you've you know you're 15 years older than you were than you recorded your first record. Right. Um, I'm sure I sound a lot different than, than I used to too. But uh, I I'm a big fan of the late nights and long necks record. 
Um, the off the beaten path record was great. I like I said, I do like the older records, but for me, those two, and I, not saying this to plug it because it's about to come out, but straight out of the country is going to be my favorite record. The two songs that they've already dropped are phenomenal. Uh, she ain't mine no more. I get, I had a buddy drummer of mine, shout out Waylon Davis drummer for uh, river Dan band. Uh, and, and, and you know, he's like me, he's on the road playing honky tonk music all over. And he would never do this for anything, but honest, truth and he texted me the other day he said something to the effect of buddy you know just got in the got in the van leaving the show and uh your buddy i heard a song that it's got to be a number one if it's not it's a tragedy and it's from your guy justin moore and it's she ain't mine no more i don't know if they're gonna single it or not but man he said that is a well-written country song and i was like thank you way way uh, I, I think so as well uh, and even the title track like i mentioned that hardy wrote straight out of the country i was trying to sing it to sharice tonight i butchered it but uh, i like the newer stuff just because i've been a part of it somewhat too maybe um, but I do like the older records, like Outlaws Like Me is great. Obviously, Grandpa's Heaven, What's So Far Away, uh, Beta Hook, Backwoods, all those are a lot of my faves. Um, but I really dig the new records and the sound of some of the new records. I like all the steel on the new record and, and that stuff. So that would be mine. I would say, uh, at, for now, Late Nights and Long Necks, and then uh, we're about to go into uh, Straight Out of the Country is going to be my favorite. But what about playing live, Just? Do you like playing the older stuff still more, or, or, or do you really just depends on what the show, what the crowd's giving you at the show? You know, honestly, I think if you gave truth serum to, to any artist, they would say that they like playing newer stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we go out there every night knowing that if we don't play all the – hits and the older stuff that people are going to throw stuff at us <laughs> you know even as a fan yeah. i get that because i if i go to a mark chestnut show i want to hear uh you know oh yeah you know uh, it's too too cold at home and all Love that stuff shot the jukebox, yeah absolutely. but as an artist you absolutely cherish the the opportunity to go out and and play brand new stuff so anywhere yeah. we can sneak those in we do and so i guess to answer your question the newer stuff is more fun to play uh just simply because uh we're so excited about it you know and mm -hmm. we want to we want to go out and and introduce new music to people and we're kind of wired that way but right. uh but yeah <laughs> I, I i i'm not ashamed of and i am proud of uh, to to have the chance to go play any older tune that we have, um, I, I'm proud of all of our records. I I'm fortunate that there's never been anything in my career that I've recorded that I go, Ugh, yeah, uh, I really don't like playing this every night, but I got to play it because it's a hit, and so, right. um, yeah, and I I would I would only have to imagine. Obviously, I'm not up there doing what you do, and I didn't have the uh, I didn't. I didn't write them and you know it's not my legacy per se but I have to imagine that you as a performer when you do play some of those hits from back in the day even though you're not as excited about to play them I'm sure different venues and different crowds and different situations what you're going through in day to day could bring up some nostalgia or emotional flood that makes you think about something when you're when you when you kick those songs off yeah no no doubt about it i mean it it, it kind of is the cool thing about music and specifically country music it, it anytime you hear a song or in our case you have the chance to go play a song or talk about it or whatever it takes you back to a place in time yeah and and so for us or for me um you know, going, you know, we go out and we introduce, or we we don't even introduce it. You know, you just kick into Small Town USA. It takes me back to, you know, 08, 09 when we put it out and it became a big record. And, um, you know, you think back every single time you play it, you think back to those, those moments where you go, we're going to lose this song and then it became a hit. And then, you know, and, and that's obviously – that that got us uh, set on a path that that we've continued on uh, since that point, you know. So, yeah. and that's just one example. But right, copy that. Well, there you go, Joshua Curtis. Um, next one I've got here. I'm going to do this one. Who is from uh, Johnson seven three eight five on Instagram? He's got two questions here. 
Um, I got a question for JM. Would he ever consider doing a cover album like Party just did recently? Like some like some of the songs he does from the podcast when he did Purple Rain from Prince or cover a Skinner song. Ever any thoughts about doing a lot, uh, a cover album, Jeff? I, I have thought about that. Uh, my Probably my favorite cover album ever. I had two of them. Sammy Kershaw did one back in the day, um, and he did – he did some old country stuff, but he also did like uh, uh, like a picture. She was standing there, moonlight dancing off her hair. She woke up and took me by the hand. She's going to love me in my Chevy van, and that's all right with me. She did. He did that. He did, uh, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. James I've Taylor. Seen, yeah, he did. He, he, and it was really good. He did it. Angie, Angie. Yeah. Uh, that was a great al- – I forget what that was called, but that was a great album. Um, talking, about a, talking about a fun guy to watch work. I mean, oh, good man. Gracious. Him, he Aaron Tippin, and, and um, uh, Colin, Colin Ray. Which their, we need their... to get all three of those guys on here, by the way. Yeah, but, um, yeah for sure. But, yeah, that was a great – cover album that i loved uh the other one that i absolutely love which was a a commercial huge commercial uh success was uh uh, alan jackson back in the day he he had a hit on pop a top again yep um and then that was a whole cover album it was a whole cover album. the other hit he had off of that and there may have been more but he had that one he had um uh And still you wonder who's cheating who, who's being true, and who don't even care care anymore. anymore. Yeah. So that was off. That oh he did blues man on that. Um, Mm. I'm just a singer, (sighs) natural born guitar ringer, kind of a clanger. Sad old songs. He did. He did that. Uh, he, that was a great album, and and I forget what that one was called. Also, but uh, go look at look up both of those albums. I'm sure you can find them really easily. But point being, yes, I have thought about that, and 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 I've been influenced by traditional country and also southern rock. So I've thought about it in terms of do I do a combo uh, if I do that between both, or do I do you know one of super traditional country and then another one that's uh you know more southern rock but yeah that's mm-hmm. something i would love to do at some point if 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 i you know the opportunity presents itself for sure yeah shit i would love it um another question from johnson 7385 here is what would justin's dream job be if country music singer didn't work out dream job not what you think you'd have fell into but what would you have just what would you have really wanted to do a pro baseball player Pro baseball player. If I were, and I'd have been, I'd have been your I, manager. That would have been great. <laughs> yeah, if, or agent would be even better. You yeah. make more money, yeah, less work, and more money. Um, yeah, but I don't get to wear the cool uniform. Then. That's, That's true. Why I like being yeah, a baseball manager. I get to wear the uni. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, obviously, it's been well documented on this this podcast. Uh, I, I love sports, and and baseball is my favorite, and. You know, had I been uh, instead of five 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 six, had I been six foot and one hundred and ninety pounds, uh, that would have been probably what I chased after instead of uh, this. You know, so yeah. All right. Well, I got one more here. We'll take a quick break for uh, station identification and give a little space here for our advertisers and sponsors to get their stuff in, which we appreciate them each and every week for doing so to keep this thing rolling. Remember everyone to use the hashtag Justin Moore podcast on all anywhere you find uh, the podcast where you listen to it or watch it. Make sure to give us that uh, five star review and a write a little short five star rating and a short little review in there. Remember to click like subscribe and hit the notification button anywhere you do that. And we sure appreciate it. Keep them coming. Uh, One more here. Um, on music here, what would it take to get Justin to record a cover of Somebody Paints the Wall? That would be killer. That's from Aaron Ryan on Twitter. That'd be a good one to put on your cover album that we were just talking yeah. about. I mean, it wouldn't take much. Just somebody asking <laughs> or writing in like like you. <laughs> yeah. We need, um, we, we ought to get you – that'd be a good one, you and Tracy, to do a duet on sometime. On the, yeah. On the cover I've also album. thought du- about that too, like doing a, a cover album um, – 
duets. And, and, and having like all of the uh, original artists sing them with me, you know, right. which like, I, thought, like, I thought that. So if I did, uh, you know, if I did uh, somebody paints the wall, get Tracy on it. If I did, um, you know, guitars and Cadillacs, hillbilly music, getting yeah. uh, Dwight on it or. You know, if I did an Alan Jackson song, get him on that. That that's also been a thought of mine. And so, yep. if an artist out there is listening to this and does that, just know I know that you stole that idea from me. Uh, by the <laughs> there way, you go. but yeah, I know. Uh, you remember that was one that that uh, Travis Tritt had a big album on was when he did he brought the Eagles back in to do um, was it Take It Easy. Well, actually, though, it was an Eagles tribute album that the Eagles that he had. Was on. Oh. Okay. He, he was one of you know because Vince Gill had a big hit on that album. Um, That's right. Um, uh, with uh, oh, that was man. their comeback right around the Hell yeah, Freezes yeah, yeah. Over era. Yep. Okay. That that was that was their album, and and Travis had that big hit on Take It Easy. Vince Gill had a big hit on something, and I forget what it was. Um, uh, but, but but point being that that was that was their album that gotcha. So there have been a lot of guys or groups who have brought in newer artists, but I don't, to my recollection, I don't remember a a, a younger artist going and doing a cover album and having the older guys come on, yeah. and and do it with them. And maybe I'm wrong, but yeah. Yeah, somebody use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast and let us know y'all's favorite if there are some of those that we missed. All right, guys, we're going to take a real short break, and we'll be right back here on the Justin Moore Podcast. Today, we're highlighting our partnership with Bobcat Company, a company that's been around for 60-plus years with no signs of slowing down. I mean, <laughs> you know these guys are the experts in the compact equipment industry. They invented the skid steer loader, and they continue to roll out new products that knock my socks off, man, I'm telling you. From the technology to the machines themselves to the crazy amount of attachments, there's no shortage of the kinds of projects you can tackle with this Bobcat equipment. You can read more about the interesting way the company got started along with all of the products they offer on their website. Check them out at bobcat.com. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas, at Central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So... Uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer, all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggyar, and Instagram, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggyar, but check us out. It's called This Little Piggy, and uh, see what we got to offer, shopthislittlepiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning in to the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour a jigger and take this a second ride with us. Welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. Um, I remember the, the song that Vince did. It was, I can't tell you why. Dun, oh, dun, baby, dun, dun. I can't tell you why I can't tell you why. Boom, 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 boom. Mm, mm, mm. All right, anyway, that was just a couple of them. That was yeah. that him and the Travis. I'm running down the road trying to loosen my load. Anyway. And Travis is wearing a blouse. In the video, <laughs> <laughs> looks like that Hank Jr. shirt I got. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so awesome. Hey, those styles, baby. I, hell, I used to wear some big old baggy jeans with Tommy Hill figure down the side. I of can't them. believe you didn't have that album. I probably did. You know me, dude. I, it, I was so much. it was huge. It was huge. I mean, huge, I remember huge. listening to it. Um, I had something I want to do real quick here while we're at the spot before I jump on some more Q and A. 
my buddy Cody Oxley in Texas, love Cody, been friends forever. Um, he's uh, uh, you you remember Big Cody, Big Ox. He's a he's a, he's the one that did the podcast bingo that I, that we put out last week. I hope everybody downloaded their bing, bingo card. I'm sure we're going to break the limits on that uh, today. Which is hey, I, he said, man, I wasn't trying to put you all on the spot. He said it's just uh, it's more like catchphrases. I was like, that's right. You know, it's not it's keep saying them. Maybe they'll stick. But anyway, he sent me a really cool video, and I was going to share it with you beforehand, but we were having technical difficulties. I'm sure you get a token on that. Um, but he sent me this video, and I wanted to play it for you, and uh, we're going to play the video of him talking about it on the YouTube channel, so y'all check that out. But here is a, a little message from one of our favorite listeners and my brother, Cody Oxley. Let me if you can hear this, Just Hi there, JR and JM. I know y'all are always looking at uh, what the number one song was when you were born, but I went the extra mile and looked up to see what the number one movie was. So for JR... Back in 79, number one on your birthday is Apocalypse Now. Pretty good one. And for Justin, back in 84, my mom kicked you out into the world. Pretty dang good movie. The start of uh, quite a series of movies, Police Academy. Good stuff. Cheers to you guys. Wow, that's a good one. That's awesome. Yeah. So Police anyway, Academy. Then, I love yeah, it. That's awesome. Police Academy and Apocalypse Now couldn't be on two farther ends of the spectrum. A real, real movie and a, and a great comedy. I've uh, seen mine. I haven't seen yours, but whoo, yeah, I've, I've a, seen mine. A, yeah, that's a, it's a classic. I'm not a horror movie guy. Though. No, Apocalypse Now is about, about war. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it, I need to a, go watch a, it. That's it's awesome. It's a war movie. Hey, yeah. thanks, Cody. Uh, that's awesome, man. Appreciate that. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. He's sporting his podcast swag. But, uh, yeah, he asked me, he said, which, which one do you think is better? I was like, oh, that's hard to pick. Both of them are, I mean, phenomenal movies. I'm more of a comedy guy, which I like, you know, I, I do like some war stuff. Uh, but Police Academy, are you kidding me? I mean, that, that was just that's a, a funny, good one. funny movie, and it did kick off a, a big string in the 80s. I mean, I don't know if there's anything bigger in the 80s than – uh, Police Academy and Ghostbusters, you know, and, and those funny ones. But remember the guy from Police Academy with all the voices that could do all the. Rrr, 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 rrr. Yep, that <laughs> guy. I mean, he was he was he was he was huge back then. So anyway, thank you, Cody, for sending that in. Uh, we appreciate that. And, and any of you guys, hey, that's a great idea, by the way. I didn't even think. I never even thought about that. Yeah, like going to there. Yeah, if any of you guys ever have any video uh, uh, questions, y'all want to send in maybe we'll try to get those put on um send them to this email and i'm going to add this to the show notes it's jm podcast at l3 entertainment.biz that's jm podcast at l3 entertainment.biz or you can send them to me through my chat option on my website jrthehandler.com send some of those in if you got videos and uh, maybe we'll at least listen to them or maybe we'll play the video here on the justin moore podcast next time uh so again thanks cody for that uh, hey, who in, in Police Academy, uh, uh, give you a, a little bit of extra trivia here. Who yep. was the the good looking, and I'm not trying to have a me too moment here, but I mean, she's she's a beautiful woman. It just is what it is. Um, uh, that was, was in Police Academy, the actress that also went on to have a giant career um in acting uh with one of the biggest shows of all time it's kim cattrall right yep <laughs> kim yeah. cattrall yeah yep. or, yep. She or was, whatever and she was also if i'm saying this right i think she was the one she was also in one of a classic movie that we've talked about before that i know you hadn't seen that my parents let me see way too young uh porky's uh i believe she was in porky's as well so yeah kim wow. cattrall and uh former i want to say was he a cowboy? Big Bubba Smith? He was the big cop with the huge gun, the big guy. The you mustache. Might be right. I think I know his name was Bubba Smith. I want to say he played for the Cowboys back in the day. Big Bubba Smith in there. And Steve Goodenberg was the was yep. the main guy. Yep. What a funny movie, anyway. Um, so anyway, yep, that was that. Thanks, Cody, for that. Got one right here, quick one here, Just. This is new F Y L U V R. New Fee Lover, I guess, on uh Instagram. Says Hi, JR. I'm just curious and always wondered, what are those bracelets Justin's always wears on his right wrist? I don't know if you know the answer and maybe you want to use this Q&A question, but I've always been curious. Yeah, so they're, um, they're, they're bracelets that were given to me. 
um, by the family of uh, family members of of police officers who had passed on. Uh, one of which is completely uh, empty. Um, it, the thin blue line. I think yeah. everybody would know that term. Um, if you don't, you should. Um, and then the other is specifically, and I don't know if they listen to this podcast, the family of this, uh, this gentleman or not, but, uh, is officer Matt Baxter, uh, and said, let's go help somebody. So I'm assuming maybe that was his moniker or what he always said or, but we've always had a, a great appreciation and tried to express our deep, you know, appreciation and thank you for uh, our men and women and our, our, you know, uh, in service and police officers and firefighters. And I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Yeah. All um, first responders. Yeah. For sure. And so, um, they gave those to me at separate times in in different meet and greets and i just put them on and i've literally not taken them off yep and that was probably you i mean officer baxter uh uh ended his um his duty in 2017 um end of end of watch is what they call it uh, in the in the uh, police world his end of watch was August 18th, 2017. And so I haven't taken it off since then. Um, and then the other, I, I couldn't tell you when I got it. But uh, I don't know, it's just a kind of a thank you to, to those men and women and all of those out there who, who serve and help keep our communities uh, safer and better places. And And not to get too deep into this, but on that subject, I, you know, our police officers get a a lot of criticism unwarranted to me um, in this day and time. And uh, I can promise you, if you want to criticize them, go take their salary and do what they do. And if you still want to criticize them after that, then by all means do it. But I yep. guarantee you, you wouldn't. Yep, they're always hiring. Ain't no doubt about it. And I've got another great question on here, or not a question, just a comment from one of our servicemen uh, that was actually over in Iraq, but I'm going to save that for a little bit more towards later on we start talking about some Mount Rushmore type things. But I had a couple more quick ones uh, before we get to some Mount Rushmore type stuff because I know we missed that last week. Um, but real quick ones here. Uh, I know the answer to this, but I'm going to give a shout out anyway. DP Hoyt uh, on Twitter asked, might be a silly question. No questions are silly, buddy. Um, but have either of you or both of you ever listened to Dale Jr. Download podcast? No, but I've heard it's awesome. Um, uh, same here. Uh, um, a uh, Actually, a great friend of ours who we talked to yesterday, JR, uh, via text, and um, – a former guest of this podcast, Marty Smith, uh, oh, yeah. an ESPN staple, uh, told me, I don't know, a year ago, he said, man, you got to listen to J Dale Jr.'s podcast. It's awesome. It's yeah. absolutely awesome. And so uh, – He was kind of saying – that was kind of like us. It's, it's him and his manager or his road guy or something, something like that. that. It's kind of like our dynamic yep, kind of thing. I think so. I so, telling us that. So I haven't listened to it, but I, it's 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 been – something that i I've, I've been meaning to for yeah. for a while so yeah i'm in the same boat hey and speaking of that real quick uh just like he would do in any conversation inside jokes to outside people how about joey's uh comments on that text thread yesterday with marty <laughs> god bless him every time Dude. i talk to him now i got like here's poppy girl screaming in the background and you know he's what he's feeding gus and bethany's getting her nails done i just i just love it unreal Old domestic Joe these days. No more Seattle domestic Joe. Domestic, Joe. Domestic, <laughs> domestic Joe. Joe. That's awesome. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there's that. No, we hadn't listened to it, but I definitely love it. I've been a big fan of uh, of Junior for a long time. Got to run into him a few times before I even got in the business, and he was always super cool. So I'm always pulling for that guy. So yeah, I definitely want to hear that myself. Uh, Kyler Rutherford at k Rutherford seventy seven on Instagram. 
had a comment up here. Justin Colmore talked me into a Traeger on the Justin Moore podcast. First cook doesn't didn't disappoint and he sent me a picture of some beautiful burgers with some cheese on them and some bacon and on top of the Traeger with a picture it looked awesome so uh Traeger if you're listening yeah we've got room for more sponsors and we do plug the product because we are both big fans great uh, so I'm glad I'm glad he liked it instead yeah. of the opposite <laughs> I'm the same because I turn people on to <laughs> like, it as well and you, and you have to you almost got to talk them into it but everybody I've ever talked into one eventually or had them over to eat they're like, man, yeah, you, this is different. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is definitely different. So there's that. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Save these last couple from Mount Rushmore. Here's one more real quick. Uh, Trenton Johnson 6 uh, on Instagram asked, question for both of you and both you and JM. And we've talked about this a little before, but we'll do it. When we'll, we'll give another round of it. Uh, what is your go-to beer either out on the road or just at home? Thanks and enjoy the podcast. Go to beer. You want to go first? I'm thinking. Yeah, I know. I know. For me, if I'm, if it depends on where I'm at, I'm situational on that. Uh, If I'm at home, my beer is usually an omission or a uh, Red Bridge or some form of gluten free beer because Diamond Dallas Pays told me I need to get on the gluten free beer to help my beer gut situation. (laughs) <laughs> uh, which I earned all these years sucking down so many beers, but uh, so I, but I've actually got to where I like the f- taste of those. So I drink. I uh, love old, Red Bridge. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I just like the beer itself. I mean, I think it's really, really good. Yeah, it's not, made the, by not the omission isn't, but I, I yeah. love Red Bridge. And my favorite uh, gluten free beer is Dara Dom, which is I've got Dallas on now. Um, so if I'm at home and get to pick one of those, but last night I actually had two or three Founders Brewery All Day IPAs. Uh, actually, last night I had a handful of those uh, getting ready for this podcast today. Uh, but uh, when I'm on the road, uh, just depends. You know, usually I try to keep something tasty on the bus. But if I go to a bar, like say if I go to the floor of Bama and I'm just going to hang out, I and I or I go somewhere and I don't know what to pick or they don't, I just get a big red. I get a Bud Heavy. That's just my old school. I grew up. I mean, I grew up, but uh, that was my beer of choice for years. <laughs> I grew up on Bud Heavy. I grew heavy up drinking Bud Heavy. <laughs> Basically, I grew up. So I go to the floor of Bama. I, I'm either going to get a Bud Heavy and a Bush or a Bud Heavy and a shot of Yeg to start the day. Yeg is just a sentimental thing there for me. That's the only place I really drink Yeg. Or I, See, I hate Yeager Yeager Master. And then ugh, I go into ugh, ugh, ugh. the Bud Light or the Budweiser, and uh, I'll do Budweiser and shots of Jim Beam or whiskey or whatever, you know, till the sun comes up. So that's usually my go-to, but I'm, I like all beers. You know, I, I, I've got, I like a cider beer. Sometimes I like an IPA sometimes if, as far as light beer. I'm like, yeah, I ultra tastes fine to me and Coors lights tasty. Really not a big fan of Miller light. That's just personal preference. I can't um, stand Miller light. Miller light is sweet to me, but I, I, I maybe that's just me, but and uh, bush light. I like a bush light. Or a natty well, lot. Natty lot. <laughs> you know, um, for me, um, you're right. It is situational. Um, but on the road, I really don't drink beer. Uh, I no. drink uh, vodka on the road. Yep. Um, I'll have, what, two, three maybe on stage. A weekend? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm playing. I'm playing. No, I mean, I was no, saying I, while I'm on yeah. stage. and You then, probably go through two and you'll get a third. You make a drink, a sip or two out of it maybe. And then uh, I try to I try to keep it calm. And yeah. I used to take a bunch of shots before I went on stage, but now that's turned into about one half of <laughs> one shot. <laughs> yeah, you used to make a full – I used to always say, God, he ain't that big a guy, but he will make the biggest shot for each one of us when it's time I, for him to make shots. Yeah, the older I've gotten, I, I don't know. Uh, but uh, I, I don't. You used really... to take them little bathroom cups and fill it up. I'm like, buddy, you ain't got to fill it up every time. But that's yeah. just how you rolled. And now I, I've noticed you. They're about half. Yeah, I've just. I don't know. It, now it's more like a ceremonial type thing rather than the effect of it. You know. Right. And so um, on the road, that that would be um, the answer there. But. Um, you know, I've gotten to where I, and I don't know if you've gotten into this, but I, I love sour beer. I remember you, you and Ross, your buddy Ross mm, telling me all about it, but I hadn't got on you the can't, train like you can't You can't drink, but I don't know, one or two of them. And then you're like, you know, you, you don't want any more. But uh, a really good sour uh, is something that I really enjoy. Um, 
and then honestly, my favorite beer is Guinness. Yeah, you are. I've always known you I, to drink I, Guinness. I love Guinness. Uh, so anywhere that has Guinness, especially on tap, I, yeah. I love Guinness. Yeah, your first bus when I first met you actually had a keg, a of Guinness, Guinness tap. On, yep, on the bus. Yep. yep, and it and it always stayed shooken up and always it terrible. Exactly and how it was supposed to, but it, it was cool. All, we, so we had that, and then we had uh, Shinerbach, which uh, oh, yeah. another another beer I really Ooh, like. I like. Texas the Shiner. Texas beer, uh, yep. Shinerbach. I actually so. brought a case back from Billy Bob's last time because it's hard to find sometimes around here. But uh, yeah, I like a I like a Bach myself. And there there's a Wisconsin beer that I absolutely love that I can't find at home, but you can get it. I know you can get it in Wisconsin, but uh, probably other places too. But it's called Spotted Cow. Yes, um, that's a good one. Really, really good beer. But yep, I don't that's know. Good. That's that's a little. That's some different answers for you. A little bit of weird beer there for you it's like but. it's like the uh was it tom t hall's on <clears throat> i like beer it makes me a jolly good fellow i like beer yeah uh, there you go so there's beer for you trenton johnson <coughs> uh next one i got here these are all going to kind of tie in together so i'm just going to run through this first one first and we'll, we you and i actually talked about this a little bit on the bus when he sent me this question originally um but we'll do it first. This is from my brother over there that runs the new site, Beats Beer and Bonfires. Big shout out to him. He goes, hey, JR, I know if you saw my story, but I'm doing the best mullets in history. Does it need, does it need to be a country singer? I figure since you know a bunch of people in the industry you might know is, who is working on a mullet, present or past. If you have any ideas, let me know, and I'll do a bracket like I did for the bar fights. Yeah, because he did a thing on bar fights, uh, who would win bar fights for country music uh, right. people. Um after also after I do this one, I want to do a historic bar fight bar fight bracket. And I know you already said Hank Jr. and Billy Joe Shaver, but if you have any other ideas, I'd be happy to add them. Basically, Billy Joe Shaver is just going to kill anyone. Um, maybe outside, and you and I talked about it. Trace Atkins, uh, he'd have to shoot Trace, but Trace can take a bullet and still walk outside not to get blood on his carpet. So I, honestly, might nobody, be a war of attrition there. Nobody can whip Trace Atkins. I'm just going to tell you right now. Yeah. In history I mean, he, or now, it just it just ain't gonna happen. Probably not gonna happen. Yep, I'm with you on that. Uh, so, but yeah, as far as mullets, we talked about this a little bit, and boy, they've been some good ones. You've had a baby mullet before. Roger's got a our guitar player's got a mullet right now. Yeah, uh, he does. And as, yeah. And as far as classic mullets, I mean, and we'll get we'll we'll go back to this at some points, but I wanted to get some people to, if y'all want to chime in to help my buddy over there at uh, Beach Ricky Beer Skaggs is the one that comes to mind first and foremost to me. While he was hot, had a yeah. mullet. Joe Diffie. Marty I mean, Stewart. Uh, Tritt. Tracy. <laughs> Alan Jackson. I mean, yeah, AJ, yeah. That's Billy, true. Billy Ray Cyrus. I mean, he had a big, ridiculous oh, yeah. mullet wearing white tennis shoes. But um, uh, here's a quarter. Um, there have been a bunch of good ones. And, you know, present day now, a lot of guys are uh, – Morgan's had one rocking lately. And I know Riley's had one lately. A bunch of the younger guys have go through phases with, with mullets. And I think a lot of times – I know mullet used to be a fashion statement. I know it's probably like me with the, with the chops. Half the time, hell, it's just – it's a lot easier. Once it's already rocking, just let it go. And you don't have to save yourself the haircut for a while. So we'll get the discussion going on that for you. But y'all send him some stuff in, and let's talk about that traditional mullets from back in the day. Or if you know somebody working rocking a sweet mullet right now, send us that. Hey, I know one that's a comedian, buddy, and he's about chopped it off. But Theo Vaughn's got a uh, used to have a sweet mullet, uh, that Louisiana hey, mullet. The, gang, gang. Off, off, off the center yep. line here, uh, Patrick Swayze kind of had a mullet in Roadhouse. Yeah. Oh, kind man, of a, a lot of those guys. Kind back of a the mullet. Day, yeah. Um, I mean, there's and there's women that used to have mullets too. Help John Party's aunt's got a mullet right now. I guarantee you. I, I, <laughs> I know for a fact she does. <laughs> Aunt Shane got a mullet right now, and, and a monster truck too with shaved doors. I ain't even playing. She knows it. Shout out Aunt Shane. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll get back on that. But those are some good ones. Here is uh, we'll kick this off with a, a little bit of Mount Rushmore. Um, stuff and then we'll bounce back into a last bit of it. This is a uh, more of a just a, a shout out. He wanted to say something to you and then he gave us his Mount Rushmore. This is from Hank 2006. What's up, brother? I was just trying to tell y'all that I love the podcast. Been listening ever since y'all started. Can't wait for each week 
for the new one. Justin always talks about heroes and legends, and I got a quick thanks to him, who he is one of my Mount Rushmore artists. I'm an Army vet who fought from 06, 07 as a gunner in a Humvee on a convoy security and recovered a team in Ramadi, Iraq. When I came home, it was a big change for me. I spent most of my every night sitting on my tailgate drinking a cold one, listening to Justin's albums, Outlaw Like Me. So many songs on that album helped me through my journey to where I'm at today. I just wanted to share that his music has helped me through some of my darkest moments and still does get me through my days. I worked security for your concert at Fall Fest in Lawrenceburg, Indiana a few years ago and briefly met him while he was waiting on his meet and greet. Y'all are awesome and it's true meaning and it's true in its true meaning and ain't Oh, y'all are awesome and it's true meeting ain't always good but that night i did and it was awesome i guess he's saying sometimes it's not good to meet your heroes it doesn't always pan out but that night Uh it did and it was awesome y'all be safe and i hope y'all read this i know you're busy and got lots to do but god bless you from all the hell raisers in indiana and have a great one also i started trending charlie daniels daily devotion and love it thanks awesome and his mount rushmore includes one justin colmore travis tritt johnny cash and ronnie dunn I mean, wow, that's um, – I don't know. I'm, I'm taking them back. But um, thank you, first and foremost, for your service. Absolutely. Uh, and secondly, I, I'm glad that the uh, the opportunity that we had to meet each other went well. And it's always certainly our goal. Um, but, man, um, I don't even know really what to say. I, I You know, to put me – in the same conversation as as those guys is um to me not warranted but but, uh but thank you i i very much appreciate that and it's very very kind of you and um like i said uh to to start this off thank you so much for your service we we so much appreciate it and what you do and have done is is so much more important than what we do so, but I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 um, I'm honored that, you know, some piece of music we, we recorded helped you through a, a dark time. That, that's, that's pretty special. And I think really beyond me speaks to the power of country music and music as a whole, you know? Yep. yep. I agree. Yep. So big shout out there to Hank 2006 on six on Instagram. Uh, we appreciate your service, brother, and you be safe. Glad you're back home. And, uh, yeah, anytime you got something, buddy, just send us notes, questions, any of that stuff. Be, be glad to listen to them, read them anytime. And next time we're in the area, hope we get to see you. Um, I know one of the big social media sites did a, um, a bracket. I, can't, I couldn't find it before the show, but we'll get on it next uh, in the next couple episodes. But they did a bracket of um, – Mount Rushmore. I, I don't know if – I guess they were doing it before us. Promise you all didn't rip it off uh, if, if you were doing this before we were, and uh, don't care if you rip us off. So, uh, But either way, I, it was cool. They did a fan thing and this and that. And um, I want to say the big write-ins were Hank Jr. and Church were the two of the bigger write-ins they had. But I think the, the list that they ended up with was Senior, Cash, Straight, Dang, and I can't remember the other one. We're gonna get it on there, but they had a thing that we've—they ran the same problem we did. You can't put Waylon or Merle. It was a—it was a go between those two, and I don't know if they dubbed them both in or just picked somebody else. But uh, but that was that. So um, so we'll we'll continue that thread as long as this podcast goes. But to to change gears a little bit before we get out of here today, um, this one is not about country music, but it, I thought it was pretty cool, and it's something we could uh, see if anybody wanted to chime in on. This is from old Shooter Buckley on uh, Instagram. He said, hey, Justin from Connecticut, uh, the one son who loves Beta Hook. He sent me some videos of his son singing Beta Hook in the living room with his stuff. It's too cute. I'm 36 and grew up on hip-hop and started listening to country about five years ago. On my country, Mount Rushmore is Justin, Stapleton, Luke Combs, and Craig Morgan. It's a good company there, too. Um, I'd like to know what yours and Justin's Mount Rushmore of hip-hop would be. Mine is Nas, Eminem, Jay Z and Biggie. That's a tough one. 
That is a tough one. Uh, it's funny. Here's a shocker for you. We didn't plan on doing a shocker oh, today. Shocker but, of the but, week. But 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 before we came on today, normally I listen to Waylon or Willie or or Hank or George Strait or something like that. I was listening to uh, Biggie. <laughs> I love but, it. Uh, Biggie, 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 can't you see? Sometimes your words just hypnotize me. Um, yeah, and it, it's like I tell people, you know, that music was such a big part of us growing up. You know, had Waylon and them had that when they were growing up, it would have influenced somehow their music. Everything that influences. And, man, MTV was huge, and yeah. the videos were just crazy. And um, Yeah, it's like, why you, why didn't you see rock and roll in country music until Hank Jr. and those guys started doing it? It's because they were the first ones that grew up with that as part of their growing up, you know. I mean, that's a good the older point. Guys, they didn't have... I mean, they they didn't have the new stuff to them was Jerry Lee Lewis and Elvis and you know that stuff. Their parents were listening to bluegrass or you know didn't even yeah. have words in that's it. That's a good point. So it's, that's just but I will it. say I will say just just a different side of the coin. You know, I grew up with those guys and my music wasn't influenced by them. Right. So there is a you can love something and not introduce it into your own music as well right. so i i do see your point but at the same yeah. time but well, um, maybe even subliminally with phrasing or something there could be something yeah, you don't yeah. even know happens. yeah subconsciously yeah right you definitely could 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 do that um man that's tough i, I mine would uh, i would start with um uh biggie definitely would be on there for me um snoop would be on there for me uh, you know, I I just think he's first and foremost. I think he's great, and I think his phrasing is so different than anybody else's. Um, and then knowing him personally, and we really haven't even gotten gotten into those stories, but they're great. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> Always good uh, to hang out with Uncle Snoop. It's it, it's it's it's. Let's just say it's fun. It's a lot of fun to hang out with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I ha I've had the opportunity to do. Um, so it would be Biggie Snoop. I probably had to put Dre on there because um, he's had I, such a yeah. huge um, – he just had such an influence uh, into all of that era stuff. I mean, from writing – not only his him rapping, but – production and all that i mean i think he's got to be there and then I'll, I'll go a little out of the box and and say uh eminem i think he's yeah. i think he's fantastic I, I really do i think he's a genius to be honest with you oh yeah he's he's mastered the 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 english dictionary for sure he knows, and he's, and easy e would be uh right there close yeah, he's on mine. And you know, I'm I so. I grew up on a lot of hip hop. I was a big hip hop fan and rap the early days. I mean, this I think it was just kind of rebelling against my parents. The worst language it had on there, the more more it pissed my dad off. So the more I wanted to listen to it, probably the same as other people listen to Elvis to piss their parents off and the Rolling Stones or the Beatles or whoever mm -hmm. they did. But but I, you know, so and I, this question kind of caught me off guard. I hadn't had time to think about it, but we'll uh we'll I'll go back to it at some point, I'm sure with when some fans chime in theirs, but um, I grew up, I really like, I like a lot of it, but I grew up on like Southern hip hop. Um, so I really like my favorite of all time is Outkast. I'm a huge They're Outkast great. fan. They're great. I, mean, I still listen to their records. I mean, they always had a smoking good band playing with the stuff. I just always liked the sound of their music and, and the, the lyrics were about home and stuff. So I was always a big fan of that stuff. Uh, another one from Houston, the Ghetto Boys. I was always a big fan of the Ghetto Boys. I used to like some terrible stuff too, some like Florida stuff, like Disco Rick and the Dogs, Two Live Crew, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, Dre, huge, uh, Public Enemy, another good one. I, they used to yeah. rock, man. They had, they always had a rocking sound. Um, another one, uh, another Texas band, Eight Ball and MJG. I was always a big fan of that. As you said, Easy E, I, I always liked Easy's uh, the way he did his stuff, and he wasn't even a rapper; he had to work at it. Uh, but uh, you know. I, I like a lot of them. I'll have to think more on that for as far as a Mount Rushmore, but definitely Outkast and Ghetto Boys would have to be on mine um, for sure. So there you go. Thanks for that, Shooter, for giving us uh, giving us a, something to ponder on. If anybody's got uh, their list they want to send in on that, use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast and uh, leave us your list on that. Yeah, we didn't even well. mention Tupac. Tupac was great. Oh, yeah. Also, huge. I mean, huge. I just – I was a bigger fan of, of – 
those other guys than I was Tupac. I love Tupac, but I was just a bigger fan of those other guys. Yep, I'm in the same boat. Uh, so anyway, well, that's about all I got. I've got a couple of other ones, but they're kind of long, so maybe we'll save those for the next time. I know we didn't get to the uh, the the crown. I did watch a few episodes, but I want to uh, I want to watch a few more before we we jump back on that. Which uh, it's gotten to a weird spot where they they're kind of making everybody look bad now, and you know it's all for TV, so I'm sure it's way overblown. So I'm, I'm not going to take it too serious, but I do want to watch a few more of that. Um, but I want to say thanks, everybody, for tuning in this week. And uh, remember to tune in next week. We're going to have a big, big episode with, uh, with, uh, with uh, a new friend of ours we're about to meet. And, uh, Justin, you want to drop on them? I know you mentioned it last week. Uh, I know in Arkansas they're playing the podcast currently on uh, local radio. They are, yeah. So if you're in central Arkansas, you can, you can now listen uh, to the podcast uh, also on – 106.7 the buzz 2 um which is uh, a station that i listen to all the time it's a it's actually a sports talk station a sports and entertainment i should say uh their flagship station is 103.7 the buzz secondary station 106.7 uh buzz 2 uh, you can hear us there on friday evening at 7 central uh, that's 106.7 Buzz 2, and you can catch the Justin Moore podcast on there as well, which is really exciting for me and, and you know, being from here and listening to that station uh, again along with their flagship, flagship station, uh, 103.7. So pretty pretty neat, but, you can Absolutely. yeah, you can check us out there 7 Central Friday evenings. Yep, very cool. Yep, and I've got uh, – I wanted to uh, update on that. You mentioned last week our Braves are playing better. They are. They're about to, about to be uh, – about to get 50-50, hopefully after this uh, this next couple of games. Um, had a few real quick uh, this day in, or this week in country music I wanted to uh, – to, to drop on us on our way out of here. 1970, Johnny Cash played at the White House with June Carter and the Statler brothers for President Nixon, who requested that he play A Boy Named Sue. Cash declines Nixon's request to do Merle Haggard's Okie from Muskogee, but did perform <laughs> Folsom Prison he Blues. He declined the president's request. <laughs> yeah. He said, nope, I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to do Hag. I'm going to do Hag's song, Okie from oh, Muskogee. Gosh. But he did do Folsom Prison, Peace in the Valley, and What is Truth. Man. Yeah, just sorry, Prez. I'm going to do these. Now, How about I do the yeah. ones I want to do? The president said, hey, would you mind playing this? And he said, no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm going to play a Merle Haggard song. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and, and yeah, and, 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 Somebody wants to give you crack because you don't want to do a song on a on a on a radio show. Give me a break. Uh, Unbelievable. 1976, Eddie Rabbit scored his first number one country single with "Drinking My Baby Off My Mind," the first of 15 solo number one country hits for the singer songwriter. Didn't know Eddie Rabbit had 15 number ones. I never would have guessed uh, that. No, uh, Elvis nope. is one of Elvis's favorite uh, writers. There, um, Kentucky Rain. Uh, 1985, Alabama released 40 Hour Week for a Living, which went to number one of the country charts. The track was the 17th in a string of 21 consecutive number one singles as is as many in as many releases, a string that spanned from 1980 to 1987. 21 consecutive number ones for Alabama. I work a 40 hour week for a living just to send it, send on, it down on down the line. line. Absolutely, absolutely. And 01, uh, Brooks and Dunn scored their third U.S. number one album, Steers and Stripes. The album produced three number one singles, Ain't Nothing About You, Only in America, and The Long Goodbye. I was going to say, Only in America was definitely on that album, which was yep. a huge hit. I mean, all those were, but that was a huge hit. Yeah, and this is this is crazy to think about. This week in 2004, think about this. In 2004, country music duo The Judds made their grand old Opry Debut performing flies in the butt flies on the butter. You can't go home. And Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. What? Is, ooh, that one gets me every day. Yeah, oh four. You'd have thought they'd have done it when they were hot, but I guess they never played the Opry when they were having their big hits. We need to you know, check you, into that because that's weird. Yeah, and if you want to hear a cool, uh, if you want to know anything on the Judds, I, I, I just saw recently that uh, one of the best country music uh, documentary podcasts that's ever been made, kind of the flagship for it, Cocaine and Rhinestones by Tyler Coe, David Allen Coe's son, is about to come out with season two, and uh, that's you got to have it. That's must. That's must listen to if you're. A country it, music it, fan. it really is incredible. It's 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 a completely different thing than what we do on our podcast. Oh, yeah. It's like an um, NPR 
But it, you and I listened to that Judd's one uh, on the way to a show, actually, in my truck. And yep. it is really, really incredible. It's yep. probably three hours or something like that, wouldn't yep. you guess? They're in depth. It, but, yep. man, it is so in depth and gives you – it gives you the most accurate uh, or most in depth, I should say, backstory uh, on whatever artist he, he's chosen – each yep. week or topic yeah i mean it's it's just because he'll pick it, one really song really out. really good he picked one song out broke the song down in a couple of hours everything and then went on to the production of the song the writer of the song i mean he just really goes into depth so y'all check that out they got a great episode on the judge there it's a little sad actually i even saw where winona came out and said she hadn't thought about some of that stuff in years the first time she heard it and it was uh it was powerful to her as well wow. so that was cool and uh and also uh, this week in country music, one of you, the pride of Arkansas, another just fantastic Arkansas singer and one of my all-time favorites. In 1974, Mr. Charlie Rich was at number one on the U.S. country chart with a very special love song. The song was written by Billy Sherrill and Noro Wilson, who had also written Rich's 1973 hit, The Most Beautiful Girl. Sherrill and Wilson won a Grammy Award for Best Country Song in 1975 ceremony for... A, special, a very special love song. And fun fact on that, uh, Billy Sherrill, uh, who is cousins to my friend Mark Sherrill, um, who is a songwriter here at the Floribama and uh, actually wrote the song Old Red for Blake Shelton. So there's a tie-in to one of my buddies and his wow. uncle or cousin, Billy Sherrill. Wrote Charlie, the, one song. the Silver Fox. I mean, son, couldn't have looked any smoother. And you want to see some YouTube gold, go look, go look him up on YouTube about half in the bag uh, doing one of the award shows and burning uh, John Denver's uh, uh, nomination uh, card. Yeah, if you that guys don't – I mean, this classic. is a really infamous story, but if you guys are unfamiliar, go check it out. Like JR said on YouTube, you can look it up. And I think it was the CMAs. And John Denver had won – uh, I think new artist or something like that. Um, and he really wasn't accepted as a country artist at the time. Um, I think it was when, um, it was, it was when it's he country had Rose. one of those. Yeah. It was when country roads was out. Yeah. yeah. Country roads, take me home. It was one of those. It was right around that time. And, so Charlie Rich is presenting the award. He opens up the envelope and goes, you know, whatever award it was. I think it was New Artist, uh, whatever they called it at the time. And it's John Denver. He takes out a lighter and lights the envelope on fire. That tells you what he thinks about it. Exactly. Yeah, so it's, cl it's classic. I mean – I'm it's not saying it's country. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong, but it is freaking classic. And well, if you're a country fan, you've got to see it. Yeah, it's back when you could definitely speak your mind. He did if he didn't think that was country boy, he burned the note on fire, boy. He'd probably burn the whole place down now because I mean a lot of people would consider that country. I think it's more folky, but hey, who knows? You know, it was country to somebody, apparently, whoever votes or their votes, which is uh Funny, we talked about this uh, last week, and we can choose to leave this in or leave this out. I thought it was funny talking about all those award shows and stuff. You know, uh, you got to win a new artist of the year uh, some years back. And, 2014. Uh, yep, and hadn't really, uh, you know, hadn't really got a call since then. Just keep churning out number ones, but don't really get the call, which is fine. It gives us the weekend off. And 2013. Then, uh, 2013, yep. And then uh, last week, talking to Tracy Lawrence, uh, Tracy also won that same award when he was a new artist. And then after that, he never got to go back and play or be a presenter or get another award after that. Just went on to string on another 17 number one. So I say if we can uh, we can do like Tracy, we'll just keep doing that. So, But uh, just wanted to give that shout-out. Yeah, y'all go check that out. That's pretty infamous. Charlie Rich, uh, 1974, uh, won the award for Best Country Song at the Grammys that year. So wow. anyway, well, that's about all I got. One more thing before we get out of here. I want to say a big happy birthday to our uh, illustrious merchandise manager and my assistant tour manager, Mr. Tanner Adams. He turns 26 uh, this past weekend and just want to give him a little shout out. Appreciate all he does out on the road for us. And uh, that's all I got for today, Just. Man, it was, a, it was a lot of fun answering all these questions, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed a couple of episodes here with uh, JR and I just, just BSing. Uh, that was done uh, on purpose because we wanted to uh, 
let you guys know that we we weren't ignoring all of the questions comments etc that we've been asking you guys to send us we wanted to get through all of them and it really just quite honestly took us a couple of weeks to get through uh not to mention uh we also have a a giant uh guest uh next week as we've we've spoken of and um our um honestly uh, the biggest star that we've ever had on this podcast and i still don't understand how we made it happen but we did and we're looking forward to it and we got to go to work, man. We got we got a book to read uh, for yep. one uh, in about a week, and we have uh, and we have um, a few movies to watch. You've watched uh, maybe a few more than I have, but I've got to go back and watch some some classic movies along with a couple of newer ones that I I have yet to see. So uh, we were just kind kind of uh, uh, trying to get through those things and prepare for uh for uh, our upcoming guest as well so thank you guys and hopefully again you, you enjoyed it as much as we did we like bs and then we also are we always want to uh have great guests for you guys but at, at, at the same time we don't want this thing to hinge on who who can we get we want you guys to uh, uh we want to we want to be able to uh you know uh bs uh, with each yeah. other as well so uh, i did get a few notes from people saying they enjoyed the bs sessions i did good. get a few people chime good. in and say good, that good. so that was cool yeah and i'm working on about 11 percent battery power since my dongles aren't all working today on my computer imagine that so your phone was dead this morning you woke up now my computer's going dead so yeah we'll wrap we'll wrap this thing up and we got to go do a show this weekend we're going up to north alabama to do a private show uh for a company up there and looking forward to doing that and uh, be back out on the road real yeah, soon. You know, and, and speaking of that, it's in Priceville, Alabama, and I was looking up our, our route to go there. It's it's due south of Nashville, so I was thinking I was going to have to go to Nashville and down, but it's just a little bit north of me where I live, but it's pretty much due east of me, yep. uh, which I was shocked by. It's like five hours and 40 minutes or something, so – uh, easy drive look forward to getting there and um and we'll see you guys next week and um we'll have again we'll uh, a, a huge huge uh movie star a movie star jr could you have ever imagined when we started this a, over a year ago they're that, gonna put me in the movies uh, i mean we're gonna have a big time movie star that's right you never know. He might ask us to be on a movie, and then we end up being small-time movie stars, and that'd be okay, too. You Maybe never he'll be know. in a Western and cast yeah. us in a Western. And, and I will say uh, just a little bit of a teaser. I'm going to give this guy, uh, you know, I, he's done interviews and stuff forever and uh, probably been asked the same uh, 20 questions. Uh, I'm going to give him a little bit of crap because me as an Arkansas Razorback fan, he is a Texas Longhorns fan, and I'm going to give him some crap over that. And I bet nobody's ever done that to him. So I'm, I'm looking no. forward to that. Yeah, me too, brother. All right, guys. Well, thank you all again for tuning in to this week's episode of the Justin Moore Podcast. Again, remember to like, rate, subscribe, hit the notification button everywhere you watch or listen to this podcast. Tell your friends and family about it. And uh, remember to tune in next week. Spread the love. Spread the word. We appreciate y'all. I'm JR. That's JM. We'll see y'all next week. All right, all right, all right. Cheers, everybody. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 69, face tomorrow, tomorrow. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Matthew 6.34 I don't know of anybody who, at one time or another, has not worried about what was going to happen tomorrow. Of course, we can prepare for it, make plans, arrangements, and reservations, and even organize our thoughts, and we should. But it's totally impossible to live one second of tomorrow until it arrives. Putting so much thought and energy into worrying about it could mean that we leave something we should do today undone. I have tried to develop a habit where while I'm laying in bed in the morning, I ask myself, what do I need to do today? Then I think through my priorities and prepare for whatever tasks are at hand. 
I can tell you from firsthand experience, after you have made all the mental and physical preparation you can to deal with what you have planned for the future, and you've prayed about it and done the best you can, worrying about it is not going to change even one minute detail about what is going to happen tomorrow. Yesterday's gone, and tomorrow has not yet arrived. Today is upon us. Live it as if it is all you'll ever have. Let's all make the day count.